My name's Henry. Thank you for taking care of me here. My name's Peshek, and I'm the miller here. You've already met my niece, Teresa. She took care of you for two whole weeks while you were in limbo. And talking of you being at death's door, while you were lying here, you worked up quite a bill with the blood letter, who came now and again to keep you alive with his potions. That quack doesn't come cheap. I paid him what I could, but I still, that is, you still owe him. I see. Well, it's better to be in debt than to lie dead in a ditch. What do I owe? I'm not afraid of hard work. You won't pay for that shoveling manure. I might have a better job for you. And it's not something any fool can do. If you prove to me you're a clever lad, I might trust you with something you could really make money from. What do you say? Well, what would you need from me? A trifle. Just to take something from someone and bring it to someone else. And not get caught while you're doing it. That sounds straightforward enough. Except for not get caught. Why would anyone want to catch me? Oh, don't worry. It's just a job like any other. Only this one requires, uh, let's say, the right moral disposition. Do corpses bother you? No honourable man should touch them. That's the executioner's job. Did you expect I'd give you a hoe and send you out to the fields? You can dig all right, but somewhere else. I want to know whether you're going to hide behind some stupid fucking scruples, or if you might be useful for more unconventional work. I was prepared for just about anything, but that's a bit much. But go on, tell me more. Listen, it's about this ring my mate Wojcik, the Kohelnitz Miller, had his eye on. Trouble is, they buried the ring by the gibbet along with the villain they hung while he was wearing it. Jesus Christ, you want me to dig up a corpse, take a ring from it and give it to your friend in Kohelnitz? Is nothing sacred to you? Money first, morals later. That fellow is dead. He won't miss it. Whatever bleeding heart came up with the idea that it's disrespectful to disturb a corpse never read the Bible. It's still a human body, only it's missing a soul. Why be disgusted by something created by God? I think I've already heard more than I need to know. You've got the tongue of the devil himself. If you tried hard enough, I bet you could justify sodomy with a goat. Watch your mouth, boy. There's a shovel here around the mill somewhere. If there's any problem, come and see me. And here's something on the side to make you dig better. Thanks. I'll need it. I can't believe I've come to this. Digging up corpses. Oh, and uh, watch out for the executioner and his hounds. They're pretty savage. And I don't just mean the dogs. You can just throw them some meat. The dogs, that is. But the executioner? Well, don't vex him. God be with you. Look at you, lover boy. What's that dog you have here? He looks familiar. Don't you remember him? It's Mart, the butcher's dog from Scalitz. Ah, of course. When I went back to bury my parents, he was guarding his master's dead body. A faithful dog. How come he's here? When we carted you here, we took Mart along too. He's been hanging around the mill ever since. How's he doing? A lot better now. I slipped him something good now and again when Uncle wasn't looking. He won't starve to death then. How long has he been with you? More or less since we came here. He runs off now and again, but he always comes back. 
Sometimes I don't see him all day. I think he likes to go wandering. What does the miller have to say about it? He can't stand him. How's that? Every time he sees him, he starts shouting that he's a useless mouth to feed and that'll skin him. Jesus. And it didn't even soften his heart when Mutt brought a hare from the woods. He was happy to eat it, but it didn't change his mind. I could have a word with him. Mm, that would be a waste of time. Does he obey you? Me? <laughs> not much. He's got a mind of his own, and I'm just not strict enough. Ah, spoilt then. No, he just hasn't learned many commands. But he's well able to beg for a piece of meat. So he's doing quite well then? Yeah. I'd keep him, but he reminds me too much of Tinker, you know? I don't want to think about Scallet. So I thought maybe you might take him with you? Me? I'm sure the two of you would get on great. He's a handsome fella and lovable. I'd be very happy if you had him. But we never had a dog at the smithy. We never needed one. Come on. He's got no one. Ah, uh, all right. I'll take him. He can keep me company on my travels. Thanks, Henry. Go and get him, then. He's sniffing around somewhere here. Hey, Mutt. Remember me? From Scalix, remember? You wanna go with me? Come on then, we'll get on like a house on fire. Follow me. What? 
Hey, who's there? This is a bit awkward, but recently you buried a convict, and um, this convict, um, was a family man. He left three young children, and I thought it might ease their hearts if I gave them the ring their father had on him in his final hour. I'm sure you wouldn't bury him with such a valuable thing. Children, you say? You're right, I do have the ring. But actually, it's a worthless bauble. You can have it for a few groschen. Can you help me with training my dog? Certainly. I'd like to practice the basics. All right, but it will cost you. Maybe another time. What are you doing here? Who are you? Help! Help! Nothing on the left hand, the right, 
Oh shit, there's nothing there either. Where the fuck is that ring? <coughs> oh, a stench makes me want to puke. Peshek will pay for this. To heal, but Halt! Who are you and where are you going? I'm Henry, son of the Scalitz blacksmith. I'm going to see my liege, the Radzig Kabila of Dvoyets. Of course you are, lad, and I'm the Pope. What do you want from his lordship, and what makes you think he'll see you? Come on, I'm not some peasant. I'm Sir Radzig's blacksmith, and I need to speak with him. It is my job to stop you. Now bugger off! I may not look the part, but I know about honor and duty. And mine is to tell Sir Radzik what happened to the sword he commissioned. All right then, go ahead. It'll be your skin if Sir Radzik isn't pleased. I've lost everything. My home, my Hell! What are you doing here? I took you for dead. Oh, it's a long story. But what about you? How did you get out of Scalitz? You wouldn't believe it. A frightful storm broke that night, and Sigismund's heathens ran back to their camp. They never dreamed Sir Ratzik would use the storm as cover for our escape. The entire village slipped away as quiet as mice while no one watched. In the morning, when those bandits attacked, all they found was an empty castle with an old goat inside. I wish I could have seen their faces. <laughs> so do I. You trick them nicely. See you later. I see you survived. Aren't you observant? You still owe me. Don't think I've forgotten. I don't owe you. I owe your father. And he's dead. So get out of here. You can't avoid this forever, you know. Of course I can. It's you who can't piss me off forever. 
Do you really want to make me angry? Do you really think that's wise? No, I don't. Fine. I owe you. And what am I supposed to do about it? Do you think you'll get anything from me? Look at what I've got. But maybe I could... Maybe I could tell you where you can find some money. If you forgive my debt, that is. All right, then. Start talking. No. First, I want you to swear you won't be demanding anything else from me. Very well, then. Talk. When we were running from Scalettes, I heard something. I don't know who said it. It's a miracle I could even hear it in that chaos. Either way, somebody hid a lot of coin under a dovecot. Under a dovecot? And that's it? That's all I know. How many dovecots could there be in Scalettes? If you've got the guts to go back there, you're bound to find it. Fine. We'll see. My respects to you, sir. Farewell. Let's have a word about the price. Why not? Since it's you. A nice sum. Just lower your demands a little and we'll agree. Agree? Close. I'll go for that. Good people, come up close and have a smell. Fresh bread. Pour yourself a bit of fresh milk to drink. Good day to you. Good luck to you. I'd like to discuss the price. <laughs> Naturally. Since it's you. That's better. Drop it a Well, that's a deep. Heavens, lad. You're looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. 
Last time I saw you, I thought you were ready for the priest. I'm feeling as good as new. Well, I'm glad to hear it. About that debt. Here you are. Thank you. I'm glad to see you're a man of honour. Is there anything else I can do for you? I want to learn to read. Who should I go and see? There's a retired scribe in Ushitz. He could teach you. God be with you. How does life in Ratai suit you? I suppose it was kind of them to take us in, but then they just left us to fend for ourselves. Nobody gives a damn about us. Did you find out what actually happened? Folks say it was on account of our silver and how Sir Ratzik sides with the king. Good luck to you. Will that be the smith's son, Hal? On my soul. It is him. What are you doing here, lad? We thought you were done for. Bandits attacked me in Scalit. And why, for God's sake, did you go back there? Who else but cutthroats and bandits did you expect to find? I needed to bury my parents. Oh, I see. Your father fought like a lion. I'm sorry. He saved my life. And not just yours. He was a good man, and you did right to bury him. I didn't even manage that. I failed to save him or put him to rest. And just what could you have done at Scalitz? If you tried to fight, the both of you will be dead. He gave his life for yours, Hal. So you'd better make good use of it. You're right. And just what are you doing here? I must speak with Sir Radzik. Is he here? He's in the palace with Sir Hanush of Ratai. They're feasting in the Knights Hall. What do you want with him? My father made him a sword. He, um, he asked me to deliver it to Sir Radzik. I don't see any sword. No. Bandits attacked me and stole it. I need to tell his lordship what happened. And then I'm going to find the sword. Of course you are, Hal. Good luck. Thanks. Graces, I have to tell you in all seriousness that this land of ours is in the shit. Deep fucking shit. Don't you agree? I might not have put it as eloquently as you, Hanush, but I've been driven out of my own castle, so I'm hardly going to disagree. Indeed, 
But Birkstein is yours for as long as you need it. There's room enough for your men and you here at Rattay, and I'm sure my ward won't have any objection to me lending you his castle. I'd be honoured. Perkstein is at your disposal as long as you wish, Your Grace. Just as well you have another castle at the other end of town, eh? <laughs> ah, at any rate, I'm beholden to you, Sir Hans, and to you, Sir Hanosh. Mm. I don't like to speak ill of your people, Sir Radzik, but, well, there's no love lost between the townsfolk and the refugees. There's been talk of criminality. No, oh, they'll have to get used to it until the situation's resolved. But when will it be resolved? And what on God's earth is this war even about? I won't lie, sir. I don't understand it. You aren't alone, father. I believe Sigismund's original intention was to persuade Wenceslas to accept the imperial crown and to leave the rule of Bohemia to him. Well, who could blame him? I know Wenceslas is a friend of yours, Radzig, but even you have to admit he brought it upon himself. I can't deny the king neglected affairs of state for other pursuits. There is a need for order in the land, but I don't think the lords who sided with Sigismund realize just what Hungarian order looks like. <laughs> Hungarian order? <laughs> what concerns me, sir, is how a good Christian could resort to such brutality. To give him his due, I don't think he expected the lords of this country to stand behind the king. But thanks to him, we're tearing ourselves apart, and now he has to get things under control. But why in God's name does he have to use those barbarians? Money is the root of all evil, young sir. Wars are costly, and this one has dragged on for a year. Sigismund ran out of coin for knights, so he recruited those whore sons that settled in Hungary. The less he pays, the more they make up for it with plunder. That's why he attacked us. He was after our silver. What are you doing? You've no business here. Clear off. Wait, it's Henry. Henry, who disappeared after I clearly ordered him to remain at Taunberg. I'm sorry, sir, but I had to bury my parents. Had to? Do you think you were the only man who lost someone there? But the others listened to their lord. And it wasn't just your own life you nearly threw away. So Robard and his men risked theirs to save you. I'm sorry, but I had to. No, oh, there you go. When you have to, you have to, Radzik. <laughs> your father was a remarkable man, and your mother, she was remarkable too. They deserved a Christian burial. Did you manage that at least? No. I was attacked by thieves. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for that girl. Girl? The miller's daughter, Teresa. <laughs> the miller's daughter saved you from the footpads? Well, there's a tale to tell your children. Uh, I owe her my life. She distracted them and then brought me to Ratai. But without Sir Robard, we'd both be dead. Well, that's what I call a good woman. Hang on to that one, lad. Still, it's a great shame your parents are buried in unconsecrated ground. That means purgatory for them. Be quiet, friar. I didn't invite you here to eat me out of house and home and deliver a sermon while you were doing it. If you're so concerned, Father, maybe you should save the innocent souls of these fine Christians yourself. Go to Scalitz and consecrate their graves. I assure you, if you're killed by bandits, your soul will soar straight to heaven, as long as someone buries you in consecrated ground first. If there's anything left to bury, that plump carcass of yours would be quite a feast for the wolves and the crows. And one skeleton looks much like another, so how would we know which were your ordained bones or those of Sigismund's Tartars? Be that as it may, why have you come here? I must get your sword back. Sword? My sword hangs here at my side. No, the sword my father forged for you. One of those thieves stole it from me. They almost killed him and he already wants to go back. Takes after his father, I suppose. Lad. I've lost a castle, a village, silver mines, and a good half of my subjects. Why would I miss one sword? Because it's the last one my father forged, and I promised him I'd deliver it to you. I understand. I'd feel the same way. But prudence is the better part of valour, and a dead man keeps no promises. Aye. The woman had to save his fat from the fire, and now he wants revenge. What kind of fool are you, boy? He's no fool. Henry, you have courage. But you need training, arms, a horse. Or do you mean to beat this thief at dice? No, sir. 
please, take me into your service and give me the chance to learn these things. The gall of him. Fled from the enemy, disobeyed your orders, duped Sir Divish, lost your sword, put Sir Robard in danger with his actions, and now he wants a promotion. Sir Capon's right. What you say is certainly true, except for fleeing the enemy. You would have run as well, believe me. Henry's earned some punishment, but how do you punish someone who's already lost everything, hmm? Courage and blind obedience are good qualities for a soldier, but a wise man also appreciates loyalty, perseverance, and determination. Besides, that was a fine sword that his father made. If he thinks he can get it back, I won't turn it down. My lord, he's a peasant. You can't make a squire of a peasant. Why not? Someone made a priest of a pig. He isn't a peasant, father. He's a blacksmith. And recent events have left me in need of his skills. So, you'd like to enter my service? So, I... Yes, I would. You won't regret it. <laughs> I probably will. I'm doing this for your father, lad. Don't disappoint me. Well, fortune has finally smiled on you today, lad. Make the most of it. Now that I think about it, Sir Hanush, the boy needs training and experience, and you need spear carriers. Hmm. That's true. The bailiff is always complaining about your people making trouble in the camp. Maybe one of their own among the guard might help. It might. In any event, it will prove valuable experience. <laughs> but let's be clear. You're the one paying him. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Bernard, see to his training, and then send him to the bailiff. Yes, sir. And don't spare him. You can rely on it, sir. Don't forget, Henry. Don't disappoint me. I won't, my lord. Oh, I'll have to get something to eat. I'm starting to get hungry. Cože je to za dědina, nedaleko hodonína, je tam studenka kamená. Jesus Christ be praised. What kind of governor is Sir Hanush? Young Sir Hans is our governor, but Sir Hanush is his guardian till he comes of age. That's not a day I'm looking forward to. What's life like in Ratai? Life is good here. By God's mercy, the war's passed us by so far. There's nothing but them refugees to disturb the peace. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? I know they got nowhere to go. Scalitz is a pile of ashes and the countryside ain't safe, but they've been here too long. Some of those buggers got light fingers, and not a one of them appreciates the sacrifices we made for them. Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Terrible things. Horrible. I hear they skin people alive and what they do to the women folk. Better take your own life than fall into their hands. Beasts they are! Animals!
May the Lord watch over you. What kind of governor is Sir Hanush? Sir Hanush is a good lord. Things won't be the same when that wastrel Sir Hans takes over. That will be a sorry day. What's life like in Ratai? We got sturdy walls and two castles to protect us. There's not many towns have that. And we got everything we need here. We got an apothecary, a swordsmith, an armourer. We got a beautiful church and fine alehouses. Farewell. There was a corpse in the grave, but no ring. What the fuck is going on? Easy, Hal. Hold your horses. If the ring wasn't on the corpse, the executioner must have taken it before he buried the body. Well, I can see where this is going. You want me to get the ring from the executioner? Clever lad. Only I wouldn't recommend talking to him about it. He's a bit touchy on the subject of robbing the dead. It'd be better to pinch it from his house. I'm not a thief. I won't do it. Robbing a thief who steals from corpses isn't a sin. Well, you know where to find me if you change your mind. Good luck to you. I've got the money to pay that debt. And I was afraid you had a chamber pot for a head. Hand it over. That job's still going, if you're interested. Sure, I'm on it. God be with you. Try unlocking this trunk. Hold the lockpick in your right hand and use it to feel out the tumbler. In your left hand, you hold the blade and use it to turn the whole mechanism at the right moment. It's quite easy. It only takes a bit of... Got it? Good. Now turn the whole lock with the blade but don't stop holding the tumbler with the pick. Otherwise, you'll be fucked and you'll have to start all over again. You forced it and broke the lockpick. That crack could be heard in Kuttenberg. You have to watch out for that. An experienced guard will recognize the sound at once. You're a dab hand, Hal. Make something out of you yet. But remember, this trunk's only for practice. With real locks, you have to watch out for the pick. Try it a few more times.
I've thought it over. I'll steal that ring. That's what I wanted to hear. You should have it hidden in a trunk somewhere in the house. Can you pick a lock? I have some experience. All right. I'm glad to hear you're not as clumsy as you look. Here's a lockpick for the job. God be with you. Wait here for me. Stay. What? This is nothing but an ordinary copper band. It's not worth a tin penny.
To heal, Mutt.
God be with you. I'll have that ring for you. Good. Nice to know you're the sort of lad I can trust with a job like that. Now run with the ring to Wojtek, the miller in Kohelnitz. He'll have some work for you, and I'll have something for you soon too. A clever fellow like you will never want for work. At the very least, I'll buy risky goods from you. I mean, the kind that used to belong to someone else and you can't sell to just anyone. You'll buy stolen goods from me. Oh, thanks for your trust. I'm sure that'll come in useful. I've got some goods here whose owners might miss them. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. God be with you. What do you want from me now? God bless.
Good health to you. Miller Peshek from Ratai sent me with this ring for you. A ring? Here it is. Useless fucking bauble. You must be Henry, right? Peshek told me about you. What the... Why did you throw it away? Do you know how much trouble I had to get it? Peshek said it was important to you. Like I said, it's a piece of junk. It was just a test to see if you've got the balls to work for the miller. It's a custom of ours, testing fledglings in the trade with a nice little wild goose chase. We need to see if you'll be hobbled by pointless principles, or if you're willing to use your head. Congratulations, you passed the test, and now we'll have a few jobs for you. I've got some goods here whose owners might miss them. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. May the Lord watch over you. What do you want from me now? I'm interested in your uh, services. So what are you interested in? Proper bath. And my clothes need washing. But of course. Money first, though. Fine. Here it is. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. <laughs> 